There's no greater feeling than creating your own successful system, but it's important to aim for a hands-off approach when developing it. Naturally, you'll need a system to manage your new installation, and today I'll share three essential tips for each component of your automated cell. Stay tuned. be tedious, but it simplifies your job significantly. Work instructions are visual guides for personnel detailing necessary tasks. Some may question the need to detail procedures for simple tasks like starting and stopping a machine. However, every process requires clear, accessible instructions for universal understanding. training provide trainees with instructions to minimize their reliance on you. After a brief PowerPoint, have everyone perform tasks on the floor to avoid PowerPoint monotony. Post-training, participants must sign documentation or take a test to confirm understanding. Simple sessions require signing, while complex or safety-focused training should include a test. Prioritize production, but ensure regular machine maintenance to avoid downtime. Work with your maintenance department to keep systems consistently maintained. Follow these three tips and you'll be sure to have a smooth operation. <coughs> Panduit's long body, non-conductive padlocks are tailored for lockout, tagout, safety measures, minimizing electrical hazards while ensuring high security. These padlocks are integral to Panduit's lockout kits and stations enhancing workplace safety and regulatory compliance. Customizable options include various styles, keying, colors, and photo ID capabilities, offering flexibility for different applications. Compact aluminum padlocks are ideal for confined spaces, while comprehensive lockout kits cater to electricians and maintenance personnel, providing a complete solution for lockout, tagout procedures in diverse industrial settings. Check them out today at Mauser.com. Wire coloring ensures safety and functionality by identifying each wire's purpose and voltage level. To learn more, we present David's Corner. Thanks, Andy. Today, we're gonna to talk about wire colors. And before you get freaked out, we're not gonna talk about the regulations that dictate the wire colors in different countries, different zones, different voltages, because that could just be kind of a mess. Instead, what we're going to talk about is the wire colors that we often encounter when we're trying to connect sensors and when we're trying to supply power to different devices. Because very often, these wires come inside these black colored jackets. And once we strip away the rubber outside of the jacket and we look at the wires that are inside, we have to make decisions on what to do with those standardized wire colors. Now, if we're supplying power to a device that's AC, usually something that you can plug into an outlet, it's of the 110 volt variety. And we might find two different varieties of those kinds of wire colors. This is typical for the United States, a black and a white indicating the live voltage and the neutral, along with a green colored ground. Now for other pieces of equipment that might be coming from other countries or some standardized things that are built in the US, we can also supply electricity of the AC line voltage variety with a brown, blue, and green wire coloring scheme. The brown is the live voltage, the blue is the neutral, and once again the green, or sometimes green with a yellow stripe, is the neutral. Now the reason that that can be sometimes kind of confusing is because in our DC sensor voltage applications, like this small limit switch, we will also see a brown and a blue wire, just like we did with the AC voltage. But we also have a black wire, and there's no green wire. So if we just look at a wire bundle, we may not always be able to positively identify it. In the case of this switch, the brown and blue indicate one of the contact sets, while the two black wires indicate the other contact set. And that wiring diagram is printed right on the sensor. For transistor-based sensors, not the mechanical type, but optical or proximity sensors, we have a very common brown, black, blue, along with a white wire. Sometimes we don't see the white wire. The brown being the positive and blue being the neutral for the DC supply voltage, and the black being our output signal wire. 
the indication when you put your hand or an object in front of it. That white wire is sometimes used for determining the output polarity or by teaching the, wire, the sensor for a certain configuration. So we have to be very careful when looking up configurations for wires. In some other cases, like this networking cable, we see far more wires and they come in pairs. This is called a twisted pair connection and it reduces some of the interference that we find in wires. If you're ever in doubt, how do you go to find the information about the wires? Now in some electronics terms, we might go and Google search a term called a pinout. The pinout can often determine the wire colors, but in the case of industrial control electronics, we usually won't get very far by Googling wire colors or pinout. Instead, try searching for data sheets. Even though the supplier web pages may sometimes contain that information, a data sheet for a sensor or a switch or a power cable will almost always contain that information that you're looking for. So give that a search. Look for data sheet and specify the part number of the device that you're looking for, and most often that'll lead you down the best path for finding that information that you need for proper wiring. Andy, back to you. That's a wrap for this edition of Automator's Edge. Be sure to check out our other episodes to stay updated on the latest in control automation.